Hey everyone! Today we'll be looking at a brand new laptop from Asus. It's a very popular laptop because of the price and the specs that it packs with it. So let's dive in! So almost everyone is raving about this product right here. I say almost because, well, some reviewers didn't really like the way the laptop has been designed to handle the thermals of the CPU among others. Link down below to see some of those reviews. But on paper, the specs of this laptop for the price is just amazing. So I really wanted to get one for a church to use in our live streaming setup. I know it's a bit overkill for the purpose of live streaming, but some editing will be done with this laptop as well and quite a lot of After Effects. Initially, the model we're trying to get was one with a 4800H Ryzen 7 CPU and the 1660Ti GPU with 1TB of hard disk drive and 500GB of SSD. It's priced at 69,995 pesos SRP here in the Philippines or roughly around 1370 US. I had a hard time sourcing this product. I called on Vilman, Octagon, PC Express, PC Corner, and other stores. They're all out of stock. So I almost gave up until I saw this online ad in Shopee. Curiously, it doesn't have the same aesthetics from the ones we normally see online. But I also did some research on my own and find out that Asus had a different marketing approach for their tough lineup in China. Thus, the different logo and branding. Aside from that, however, everything is the same. I got this unit for 68,000 pesos plus a 950 pesos shipping cost, almost the same price as the SRP. But I got an RTX 2060 GPU instead of a 1660 Ti. I will be doing some upgrades on this laptop as well. Basically, we'll just maximize all the storage connections available internally. So we'll add another 500 gig of M.2 NVMe as the work drive and another terabyte of 2.5 SATA SSD for the file storage. Aside from that, I've ordered a 32 gigabyte Crucial SODIMM for this, but that upgrade will be in another video because as of this recording, it hasn't arrived yet. Here we are upon arriving. Here's the package. It's so well packed. Any thief will just give up opening this up. Heck, I almost gave up opening this package. It's like the seller doesn't really want you to open it. And it's a good thing for me. Seller also didn't mention it, but they gave me a free mouse pad, an Asus bag, and an RGB keyboard and mouse. So, ito ang kasama sa package. Meron tayong libreng keyboard, LDK.AI. Meron tayong libreng Asus bag. A generic bag and yung tough A15. Kung mapapansin nyo, iba yung box. Um, okay lang yan kasi ito yung marketing strategy ng Asus sa uh, China. So, na-rebrand nila yung tough to TX or the one. Bukas na siya. Sinabi naman ng seller na before they ship the products, they checked it themselves. So, yun. Wala na yung seal dito. Pero titignan natin yung loob kung okay. Okay, so bubuksan na natin. Ooh, born to be different, the one. Ito yung laptop. So we have a manual. Power brick, power cord. Yung power cord na kasama since China brand eh iba yung plug so kailangan natin ng adapter so may kasama siyang para sa pag magdadagdag ka ng hard drive na 2.5 inch ito yung kailangan mo so ito yung laptop TX ang logo kung napapansin nyo plastic pero brushed aluminum finish makinis, maganda and yun tough gaming so we have RTX 2060 for this model, Ryzen 7, that's 4800H, 144Hz, yung monitor natin. So first time natin ibuboot, RGB keyboards, yun, 
yun, fast boot up. Uh, meron po tayong kasamang 512GB M.2 NVMe drive, dual channel na 16GB RAM, RTX 2060, and yung sinabi ko nga kanina, 4800H yung processor natin, AMD Ryzen 7. So, to confirm the legitimacy of this product, I registered the serial number at the ASUS website and it recognized this product. It came pre-installed with a Windows 10 Pro activated, but also came with uh, some Chinese programs which I don't really trust. So, I recommend that you reset your Windows if this is the product that you bought. Okay, time to upgrade this laptop. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, the only upgrades we can do right now are the hard drives because the RAMs haven't arrived yet. Uh, we have a couple of SSDs here. We got a 500 gig M.2 NVMe and a 2.5 SATA SSD. Both are from Seagate and they are Seagate Barracudas. So first things first, you have to open up your screws plus one in the middle. Just be reminded that the screw this one on this corner it does not go all the way out. So, may may iwan dyan. Huwag niyong pilitin tanggalin. Okay? So, let's open this up. So, yeah, Natanggal ko na yung mga screws. And again, itong corner na to, hindi siya mag-go all the way out. Focus pa. Hmm. Hindi siya mag -go all the way out. So, kailangan natin tanggalin to para ma-install lang ating M.2 and yung 2.5 inch SATA SSD. By the way, you open it from this side. From the side kung saan yung hindi natatanggal na screw, dun yung siya bubuksan pag ganun. Okay? Also, gumamit kayo ng prying tool. Like a credit card or yung nabibiling prying tool. Para hindi masira ang laptop, hindi magasgasan. O yung kuko nyo para hindi rin masira. So, this is the internal of the tough a15 the model is uh, fa506 iv so we got a 48 watt hour battery this is where the ssd will come the 2.5 and dito yung m.2 sa taas niya and dito ididikit yung ribbon tas yung ribbon nakadikit dito sa sata ssd yung m.2 what i appreciate with this model is that they have included the screw Mm, ibang mga laptop kasi hindi sinasama tong screw na to so mahihirapan ka pa maghanap ng screw para ma-pinch down yung M.2 na SSD so let's open these boxes and then install them properly so ito yung M.2, simple yung simple, maliit so kung ididikit natin siya dito titingnan nyo, diba itong dulo niya may 4 pin and then ito yung maraming pin so, yung 4 pin dito sa side, yung maraming pin dito. So, pag ganito yung pagkabit natin sa kanya. Okay. Push nyo lang siya. Yan na. Tapos, dapat pala tinanggal ko muna tong screw. So, tatanggalin ko muna. Wait lang. So, andyan na po yung SSD natin. Uh, ito na yung screw. Hindi naman siya kailangan sobrang idiin. Kailangan lang hindi siya nakaangat. Okay, so ididikit na natin to, Bubuksan muna natin itong box. Tapos ididikit na natin siya dito. Ito na siya. Simple simple. Open up. So ito siya. Very light. Hindi mo kakalaing may 1TB sa loob. Ito yung para sa SSD. Lalagay natin para makabit siya dito. Tapos ito naman yung ribbon. Para itong ribbon na to dito. Tapos ito yung nakadikit sa SSD. So let's attach this now. So, ito na po siya. This is hard, hard drive. I've attached the screws here on the side. And then, na-latch back ko na siya dito. So, this is the M.2 natin na dinagdag, which is 500 gig. Ang balak po natin dito will be the work drive, which is, which means dito tayo mag -e edit Ito naman po yung archive natin, kaya siya 1 terabyte. This is the Kingston um, M.2 na kung saan Nandito yung boot drive natin. So, we'll patch it back up and then format the two SSDs. Hopefully, they work. Uh, we're waiting for the upgrade for our RAM. So, it's on its way here. So, ito yung dalawang RAM na kailangan natin i-upgrade. Currently, it's 16 gig. We plan to upgrade it to 32 gig at uh, 3200 megahertz. So, napatong ko na yung case. Hindi mo natin siya i-screw. Testing muna natin. Boot up natin. Kung ma-detect niya yung dalawang SSD. 
So, we booted it up na. Kung napansin nyo, hindi ko muna tinanggal yung battery kanina. Uh, ganun po talaga ang mga living on the edge. De, joke lang. Hindi ko lang naalala tanggalin, pero dapat tinatanggal muna yung baterya. Para lang sigurado, para lang safe. Okay? So, ito na. Wala! Okay lang. Punta tayo sa drive partition. Drive partition. Mali, hindi pala drive. Disk partition. Disk partition. Yan. Ayun! Yun! Kita natin siya. So, kailangan in-initialize lang. Okay na yung GPT. Okay. So, ito yung 1 terabyte. At ito naman yung 500 gig. Ito yung boot drive natin. Okay. Let's do this. Uh, new simple volume. Next. 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 Finish. Yon! Ito na. 1 terabyte. Ito rin. Gawin natin ganon. Hindi lang gumagana ang mouse ko. Nabulok. New simple volume. Next. Next. E. Next. Next. Finish. Yon! 500 gig. Accessible. So, ito na po siya. We have a total of 3 hard drives inside. All SSD. This is the 1 terabyte. Uh, 2.5 inch SATA SSD 500 gig NVMe SSD dito tayo magtatrabaho at ito po yung boot drive natin dito lahat ng software natin okay so we just have to shut it down and screw uh, screw down natin yung mga tinanggal natin kanina ito nga pala yung ginagawa ko kapag uh, kailangan screw o unscrew nilalagyan ko ng papel sa likod ay ng Parang yung paper na manipis sa gitna. Para lang di ma-scratch yung screen natin. So I ran Crystal Dismark to test the speed of the read and write speeds of our SSD. And this is for the boot drive Kingston. Ito naman yung so 1 terabyte natin na SSD na 2.5 SATA. And this is the Seagate Barracuda NVMe. Kaya siya medyo average naman siya for an NVMe drive. Yung Kingston lang yung medyo mabagal. So, to sum it all up, I'm sure you noticed that I did not get into the details of uh, the performance benchmarks because honestly, there are a lot of videos here on YouTube that does that and they would do better jobs in benchmarking the performance of this laptop. But personally, I would recommend, I would recommend this laptop because it does perform well. I tried exporting a 1080p 30-minute YouTube video and it did it for around 10 minutes, give or take. Uh, it's not bad comparing it to my desktop, which is a quad core, I know, but did it for like 15 minutes, give or take. So I liked how this machine worked, especially with the upgraded SSD, the Seagate NVMe. And uh, I was actually thinking of getting the 970 EVO Plus, but it was really just too expensive. Talking about money or affordability, it's really relative. I mean, 68000 for a laptop. Uh, may be affordable to some but it may be too expensive for some so if you don't need the power uh, don't get this I don't really game personally so I can't say if it's a good gaming machine but for video editing yes it is a good machine for video editing I would have this over a MacBook Pro anytime because of the price tag Personally, I, I use an old laptop with a quad core and 16 gigs of RAM, but that's a different video altogether. My point is, if your video editing laptop is dying or you need a new laptop or you don't have a laptop and you need a new one for video editing, then this may be a laptop for you for the price and uh, for the performance. It's a really good uh, product. I haven't really experienced any thermal uh, problems or thermal throttling so I can't really say anything about it for our church it's a wonderful option for our purposes uh, this is where we edit and stream our worship services so it's a really good machine so that is our video thank you so much for watching please like please subscribe God bless you and I pray that this pandemic would end soon take care and stay safe always